In recent times, Radio Master really has been building out their range of RCs. Obviously, we have the originals like the TX-16, but in the last couple of years, we've seen things like the Zorro release, the Boxer, and now we have this, the Radio Master Pocket. Now, this is a radio around the same size as the Zorro. However, this is more of a gamepad style controller. It's designed to be portable. It's available in multiple versions. It has Hall Effect gimbals, Edge TX, and it can offer up to nine hours of battery life. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of this new radio, walk you through some of its features and capabilities, and then at the very end, I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Okay, so taking a look at the pocket itself. Now, when you get it, it comes in this nice box with some plastic packaging. It does come with this nice little Radio Master protection cloth. In the bottom, they include a screen protector for the built-in display, and then under this, you will find the manual for the radio, a little QA sticker, and some additional stickers from Radio Master and a USB-C cable for charging. Now, opening up the radio itself, it comes, as I said, packaged in here, and the version they have sent me here is the clear version, but it is available in other colours as well. And I actually have another colour case in, we'll take a look at a little bit more later on. Now, the first thing you will notice is that it is a gamepad style controller. So we've got removable sticks on this one, and the nice thing is the sticks actually locate into the back grips here, a bit like the DJI radio in that respect, and that keeps them out of the way. And to fit them, we simply pop them out of the little rubber grip, screw them in, and then you're ready to go. Now, obviously, these are pre-length, pre-machined sticks, so you can't have any adjustment on these. However, you could replace these for other sticks if you wanted to. So if you did want longer ones or if you wanted shorter ones, you would possibly have to either have something made or there might be other sticks available in the future as well. Now, if you look around, it has all of the usual basic functions. So we have an LCD display in the middle here. This is for our Edge TX. We've then got our control buttons for Edge TX down here. So we've got the return, the page forward, back, and telemetry button, system model, and our rotary encoder over here. All of the usual things you'll find on an Edge TX radio. We've then got our trim functions down here on these little joysticks. This allows us to adjust the trims on our joystick on each side. We've got our power button, speaker, and then our lanyard hook in the center. Moving up to the top, you can see we have our built-in antenna. Now, what's really nice on this is that it is folding, but you can also rotate this as well. So you can rotate it 90 degrees if you wanted to, and then it folds down the back out of the way. Button-wise, what we've got on the top is two three position switches here in the middle. Again, very similar to the DJI radio in that respect. You've then got two latching push buttons on the corners. These actually have built-in LED indicators to show you that they're active, and we'll take a look at them in a second. And then further down at the back, we've got one S1 rotary encoder, and then you've got a momentary button over here. That isn't a latching button like it is on the Boxer. That is just momentary. So again, you can use that for pressing and listening to telemetry data and things like that. If we then look on the bottom, we've got a headphones, a USB socket for charging, as well as our SD card. And then on the back, you can see we have our module bay, which allows us to fit an external module. The version I've got here is the Express LRS edition. This one allows up to 250 milliwatts of output. But if you did want more power, you could put that one watt version on here as well if you wanted to. And then on either side here on the grips is where the batteries go. Now, one great feature about this radio is it comes available to use 18650s. This radio is not limited to the 18350s like you see on the likes of the Zorro, and that's why you're able to get up to that nine hours of battery life on this radio in the 250 milliwatt mode, and you can see that there. It doesn't come with batteries as standard. I've got it fitted with two Radio Master ones here. However, if you did want to use Radio Master batteries, you can get these, they make these available. Grips do unclip as well, you can just pop them off, or you can use any 18650 that you choose to use with this radio. But the real big bonus is that you can use the larger batteries. The Radio Master ones are 2500 milliamp hour ones, but you can get larger ones if you wanted to, and if you did, you'd get even more 
battery life. You also under here have the adjustments available for the gimbal. So you can see there there's an arrow, there there's an arrow and an L plus up there allowing you to do all the adjustments on the gimbal so you can adjust the tension on the springs as well as adjust which one you want to adjust with regards to its tension and the one you want for the throttle. Now to power the radio up is very similar to all the other ones. We simply press and hold the button and then it will kick in. You can see that the display on this is really, really bright actually. I left it like that so you could see how it looks on my camera and it's easy to see with my eyes but the camera is struggling to pick it up there so what I'm going to do is just go into the settings and knock the brightness back on that so you can see on the display as well. There we go, I've just knocked the brightness back down to 5 so you can see it. There is a bit of a flicker that you're seeing here on the camera but I can't see that myself. That's just as a result of the frame rates. So. Obviously, Edge TX built in is standard, so it has all of the usual screens and functionality. So if I hop through, we can see the mixer monitor, all of the normal screens on the home screen. If we then hop into the model screen, we can select whatever model we want. And again, go through all of the usual settings that are available on this radio. Now, because it is based on Edge TX, it means you get all that great functionality. It really has come on a huge amount over the last few years. I'm not gonna go into the depth of Edge TX in this video. If you are new to RC and you're new to this radio, I'm probably gonna put out a complete guide on Edge HTX in the near future so please do make sure you are subscribed to make sure you get a notification when that happens but what you need to understand is it has everything you'd expect to find on a normal edge tx radio as i mentioned some of these buttons also have indications of when they're pressed so for instance if i press that one down you can see we've got a green led down there showing us that that button is activated it's the same for this one over here this one at the back doesn't have a light and these switches don't have a light either but these two here do have something just to signify that they are actually in use interestingly just looking at this one the led on this side is a little dimmer than the led on that side i'm not sure if that's just to the way it's positioned on the side here it looks bright just like that one there but from the top you can see that there is a slight difference in how it looks you then got the light around the power button in the middle again shining out because we do have that frosted clear shell and as i said you can get this shell in other colors as well radio master are going to make it in all sorts of colors available for people i do actually have another shell here for this radio if i just go over here you can see i've also got it in this blue there you can see it comes with the battery connections pre-installed in the front panel and that allows us to swap it over if we wanted to. Now going over the main specs, Radio Master say the size is 156.6 by 65.1 by 125.3 and that is the folded size and it's obviously going to be a bit bigger unfolded. Weight wise they're saying it's 288 grams but that is the dry weight without the batteries and if we take a look at it with the battery we can see it comes in at 386 so you're getting roughly 100 grams for the batteries if we compare that to its closest sibling which is the Zorro you can see that even with the batteries installed it does come in much lighter and in fact if we just put these two side by side it is quite interesting to see them next to each other because you can see the differences it's definitely much smaller more compact you can actually see the gimbals are smaller compared to the AGO1 minis which is obviously going to mean you can't put them in this and what's more than that interesting is the fact that whilst the radio is smaller it does take those 18650s and it is going to offer much more battery life over the Zorro as I've said they're saying up to nine hours with the Express LRS edition on 50 milliwatts of output now just coming off some of the other specs on this the screen size is about 1.5 inches corner to corner it supports QC 3.0 charging for those internal batteries as well and as I have mentioned the Express LRS module allows up to 250 milliwatts of output but you can also get it in the cc 2500 version as well and that version is actually a little bit cheaper than this one now gimbal wise as i've said they are hall effect gimbals with fixed length sticks that you can take off and remove and store in the back but as you've seen that they are smaller than the gimbals on the likes of the zorro which means it's not compatible with the ag1 minis 
Now just to take this radio apart and give you a quick look inside but also show you what might be entailed in swapping everything over to the other case, the first thing you're going to need to do is remove the back covers and then there are four hex screws, one in each corner. What's actually unusual on this is that they are hexes and not Phillips. Traditionally I've seen Radio Master radios use Phillips screws but this one has hexes so what you're going to want to do is carefully unscrew them from each corner. We're then going to lift the back up off the radio and what you need to be careful about is there is a wire that runs from the back module bay to the main PCB so you're not going to just be able to lift it off but the easiest thing to do here is just carefully lower it down like this and then gently remove that wire from the PCB and then that will allow you to free up the back cover from the main shell. Now just putting them side by side to show you on the back we've got the module PCB, we've got the push button, the momentary one and the rotary encoder up here for that S1 and then everything else is mounted to the front. Now looking around internally you can see that it is a single PCB board with the Express LRS module mounted on the top. All of the switches and buttons though are directly mounted to the PCB. The only thing that isn't is our gimbals. These are Hall Effect gimbals as I've said and you can see the wires for these going down to each side there. We've then got the wiring going up to the Express LRS module our LCD display wire here in the center, our speaker wire down here, and you will notice that there is a little connector here that's unused. That is labeled power key, not sure what that is for specifically. There's nothing that I've unplugged from that, but there's nothing plugged into it. And then up here, we have our connector that goes to the back end. And then there's another unpopulated connector down here with our USB-C port, our SD card, and our headphones jack down there. Now, swapping the boards over on this is really, really straightforward from the looks of it. We've got a screw here, 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 here. That is what's holding the PCB to the main cover. And then we've got our gimbals, which have four screws, one in each corner, that you're going to be able to lift out. And the swap over should be fairly straightforward with the antenna just held in place there with little clips that you can just pop out. Just one other thing I wanted to point out that I didn't mention earlier is our USB-C port at the top. That's for updating the firmware on the radio. It's always worth remembering that Radio Master used two USBs. We have our charging USB at the bottom and then our firmware update and our data port USB at the top. And that's the same on pretty much all of the Radio Master RCs. Overall, the design of the PCB looks really nice. The quality of the components looks good. No issues that I can see at all. There is just a little bit of flux down there where they've done some hand soldering on some of the connections. But other than that, it looks really tidy. And one other thing I did just want to note is this little comment down here. Notice it's called the Zorro Pocket, and this is version 1.3. Now, whilst I have already mentioned this, I want to talk a bit more again about the AG01 Mini Gimbals. Now, this is the original gimbal that I took out my Zorro when I did fit the AG01s. Now, just showing you the gimbals side by side, this is the original gimbal from the Zorro, and this is the new gimbal from the Pocket. You will see that the mounting holes are in completely different positions. What you'll also note, though, is this gimbal will not even fit in this cutout in the PCB. If I just place it on the top, it just will not fit at all. There's just no way of getting that gimbal in the radio. If I just show you them a little bit closer, what you'll see is it is a much shorter gimbal front to back. So if I just lay them there next to each other, you can see it's much more compact overall. They really have taken all of the excess material out. And in fact, the fear aside to show it is there to there. You can see it really is much less deep overall. But again, the mounting hole is just not the same. Could you? cut this somehow and then try and get it in potentially but in the end it simply is not designed for it. Now whilst you can't fit these gimbals into this radio one nice feature is you don't actually have to remove the back cover to be able to make adjustments. If I just remove our rubber cover there you can do all the gimbal adjustment from the back side. You don't need to remove the rear cover at all. You can see there are arrows there and if you remove the battery that does free up the space to allow you to get in there with a screwdriver and adjust the springs as well as the ratchet if you need to. 
Okay, so to share with you my thoughts on the Radio Master Pocket. Now, just to be clear, I was sent this radio for free. However, I've not been paid to make this video, and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Now, I had about a week and a half on this radio, and overall, I think it's really good. There are one or two little niggles that I have, which I'll come on to in a minute, but overall, what you're getting here for a fantastic price, because this radio is about $60. $5. You're getting a radio that has external 18650 batteries, which means you get fantastic battery life. You've got Edge TX, pretty much all of the switches and buttons you need, foldable antenna, decent gimbals, little display. What is not to like? And again, $65. About the only two niggles that I do have on this radio is A, that top corner button. I would have preferred if that was latching. That for me is now my natural arming button simply as a result of the boxer. I would have preferred that to have been a latching one. And it is a shame that you can't install the AG1 mini gimbals, but that really is an end of the world on a radio of this type. What Radio Master have built here is something that sort of sits in a new segment for them. It is very much a gamepad style controller radio. It has the same types of switches as the DJI radio, but it isn't that sort of overall design. It doesn't have the bits that stick out either side. It is more of a block, but it is comfortable in the hand. It really is fairly good. You don't get any feeling that you're compromised as a result of this radio. And the quality of the gimbals is decent, actually. There's really not a lot of flex in there. They do feel nice and smooth. And considering the price point Radio Master have gone for here, it is incredible what they've been able to deliver. There's also a lot of the nice other little features. We've got the trainer port, we've got the USB functionality on the SIM, you've got the external module bay, and you've got the ability to change the outside shells as well. So really, what is there not to like? In the end, for me, the Radio Master Pocket is very much the ideal second radio, a spear radio, one that if you just don't want to carry something big, you can toss it in the bag or you're after a radio for the bench, but it will be just at home here on the bench as it is out in the field. It could absolutely be the main radio for many people. There's no reason it couldn't be, but if you are someone who does have a bigger radio and you want something in the bag that you can rely on as a backup, it's also going to make a real good option option for that as well. Now, if you're interested in getting this radio, there will be a link to it in the description. That is an affiliate link. Radio Master is one of the only companies I do use affiliate links for on this channel. And if you're interested in getting one, there is a link to it there too. I want to say a thank you to Radio Master for sending this one over. If you're interested in seeing my review of their other radios, I have reviewed the Boxer. I will put a link to that in the description as well. Finally, I just want to say if you have found this video interesting, please do make sure you are subscribed subscribed, put your comments below and I'll try and answer any questions as well. And finally, if you'd like to support the channel, there is a link to my Patreon in the description too. It's only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.